between these two AFL originals, a rivalry that dates back to the days of the New York Titans and the Boston Patriots, back to the year of 1960. The Jets winning the toss they have elected to receive. Here's the kickoff from Tony Franklin, and we're underway at Foxborough. This is Kirk Springs on the return. Andre Tippett in on the tackle, a 19-yard return, and the Jets go to the offense. Quarterback Ken O'Brien, who has been solid, playing under control, and a running back combination of Johnny Hector and Marion Bobber, Joe Walton, deciding to rest Freeman McNeil, at least at the start, because he is battered coming off the Miami game. So the Jets, first down from the 23. And Hector stopped by Andre Tippett. The Jet offensive line coming off an outstanding performance against Miami on Monday night. Jet coaches were not pleased with this unit two weeks ago against Cincinnati, but they were firing off the ball against the Dolphins. Up front, the Patriots with Sims Owens and Adams, Julius Adams, replacing the injured Toby Williams at right defensive end. He's 37 years old in his 14th season, and a change on the outside, Larry McGrew to the outside with the injury suffered by Don Blackman, so Rembert starting inside, and Raymond Claiborne anchoring the secondary. Third down play for the Jets. Third and 13. Marion Bobber, the intended receiver, covered by the outside linebacker Larry McGrew. Bar, the Jets started off much as they did Monday night's game against the Dolphins with four wide receivers, both on first and second down. Third down situation, the Jets have been very proficient over the past uh, few games, but the Patriots, number two in the National Football League on third downs, stopping the other team, came up a winner that time. And there's Irving Fryer back at his 35. Dave Jennings, who comes off an outstanding game against the Dolphins, back at his five. Good one. Excellent coverage by the Jets all over Fryer. Marion Bobber leading the charge. A 41-yard punt and only a two-yard return. So here are the Patriots now to the offense. With Grogan at quarterback. And he and Stanley Morgan have had some fun times against the Jets over this over the years. Steve Grogan has had great success against the Jets. This has been a battered offensive line. In fact, until recently, only Ron Wooten had escaped injury. First down for the Patriots. The love, ball at the 40. Loves to play action passes. Tony Collins, short pickup. Joe Klecko on the stop. And this, the 3-4 defensive alignment utilized by Bud Carson. We'll see all kinds of shifting here. Mark Gastineau will be all over the field. Rusty Gilbo now anchored as the starter at the outside linebacker position with the departure of Ron Farrow. And Rich Miano, the rookie from Hawaii, replacing Johnny Litt at free safety. Litt is out with a knee injury. There's Tony Eason sitting it out with the separated shoulder. And he has certainly heard the boos from the crowd the last couple of weeks. Even when he was leaving the field last week, he heard it unmercifully. Not a very classy act by the fans, or some of the fans here at Foxburg. Second down and nine from the 42. Coming off his best game as a pro in the win over Buffalo last Sunday, a 16-yard pass play. 
You see Glecko uh, set off to the side, gets a little pressure, but Gaston, though, 99, gets some pressure inside. Just a little curl in the middle of the field, in between the zone of the New York Jets. Big first down for the Patriots. And they have a first down of the Jet, 42. James and Collins, the setbacks. And Brogan going deep for four. Bobby Jackson on the cover. This is the excitement that has been lacking in a lot of the play calling up to this point as far as the Patriots have been concerned. Grogan calling his own plays, likes to go deep, which stretches the defense and opens up a lot of the short passes. And we have heard it uh, from the early portion of the season, all the criticism in the New England area concerning the conservative play calling of head coach Raymond Barry. And he says he's not a conservative type of guy. When he was playing, he liked to be very aggressive. So why is he conservative he, as a coach? He admitted. He said, I've probably been too conservative. He has changed coaching staffs and changed offensive terminology. We'll get into that a little bit more. All right, second down and ten. And it's to the ground from Craig James. Barry Bennett on the stop. And the running game of New England that has struggled right throughout has changed its look last week. Barry goes with a combination of Collins and Tatupu. Now back to James, who is at a fullback position. Not a good blocker, yet Barry feels more comfortable with this uh, combination of James and Collins. James is really a halfback. He said during the week, he says, I looked over last week and saw James on the sideline, and I wanted them both in there, but you're playing with two halfbacks in your backfield, and you really need a fullback. I think your running game is going to go better if one can block and one can run, and obviously uh, they're still searching for some kind of identity offensively as the Patriots. And the Patriots have called for time. Timeout called by New England. Third down and 11 coming up at the 43 as we check the scoreboard. The Browns lead the Raiders in the fourth quarter. Minnesota in front of San Diego. They are in the fourth quarter. Philadelphia over Dallas, 16-14. That is a final score. The Giants are bouncing back from the problems of the last couple of weeks by knocking off the Redskins, who are struggling. Rams over the Kansas City Chiefs. Todd Blackledge starting a quarterback for the injured Bill Kenny today. And Houston doing it to Cincinnati. Big win. There was some talk about... Uh fourth quarter uh, 44 to 27 but uh, a lot of talk down there about uh, Campbell maybe in some uh, some problems uh, so he doesn't talk to the general manager very much and if I were the head coach and weren't winning many ball games I'd be talking to as many front office people as I could that goes back to an incident last year where uh, they got into a disagreement and Herzog reportedly uh, publicly embarrassed the uh, head coach Hugh Campbell and huh? Buffalo over Indianapolis, 21 tonight. Incidentally, if you're ever, ever uh, looking to punish your children, Bob, I haven't been studying for today's game. Watched nothing against the announcers or the production crew who handled the uh, Buffalo New England game of uh, last week. But that had to be one of the worst football games I've ever seen in my life. And if you ever want to punish the kids, let's give them a copy of the tape of last week's <laughs> Buffalo New England game. Well, it was it was here in Foxborough, and it was it was an overcast, very foggy and rainy, cold day. Oh, so, is that why? And uh, a lot of drop balls. Yeah. At both ends, uh, by potential interceptors and uh, potential receivers. Proud of. 60,000 here in Foxborough on a typical New England crisp fall day. Miami leads Tampa Bay in the first 7-0. Back to the third down at 11 for the Patriots following the timeout. Out of the shotgun, and Grogan had some difficulty with it, and then fires deep for Morgan. Glenn and Miano on the coverage. So much for this uh, opening series for Steve Grogan. He had him open, though, Marvy. He didn't have him open a lot, but he was open a couple of steps. Miano, playing the deep half of the field, had to try and get over and give some help. It's a good play, though. I like the opening series for the Patriots, stretching the field, threatening the Jets deep. 
And we'd like to welcome those of you who have been watching the Indianapolis Buffalo game. Marv Albert with Bob Greasy from Foxborough. Rich Camarillo just did get that putt away. Rich coming off a, a poor effort. And he had been going very well up until last week that even saw him shank a 12-yarder. This one for only one. First and 10 at the 17. Johnny Hector stopped by the inside linebackers, Nelson and Rembert. Well, I think this is a good opportunity for Joe Walton to start uh, Johnny Hector in the backfield. It's a short week. Uh, Freeman McNeil was banged up against the Dolphins quite a bit on Monday night. And I think if you try and, and use McNeil all the time, uh, you're going to get him banged up and hurt. It's a long season. Hector is a fine player, and I think it's a smart move to get him in there. McNeil coming off a 173-yard performance. Hector again. And we'd like to welcome those of you who have been watching the San Diego-Minnesota game. We are early first quarter. Jets and New England are scoreless. The Jets third down and eight from their 21-yard line. Make it a third and six from the uh, 21. There's Freeman McNeil, who coming into today, leading the NFL 645 yards on the ground. And now a backfield of Nick Bruckner and Johnny Hector. And they swarm all over Ken O'Brien. Adams and Tippett getting to the quarterback. The Patriots have had problems offensively, but defensively, they're one of the best units in the league. Tippett, number 56, normally a linebacker, and leads this team in sacks. As you see right there, is the first one to get to the quarterback. 18 and a half sacks last year for Andre Tippett. But clubs have been able to uh, handle him since opening day when he had three against Green Bay. That is first sack since the first week of the season. Irving Fryer awaits this Dave Jennings punt. gets the bounce inside the 40-yard line. It's a 49-yard punt. The Patriots will take over. Let's get back to NFL 85. All right, Marvin, Philadelphia, this was the winning score. Ron Jaworski, his pass is deflected by Everson Walls, caught by Kenny Jackson. He saunters into the end zone, 16 to 14, a big upset by Philadelphia over Dallas. Bob, you think I'm out work with Kenny Jackson, too? <laughs> Anybody that catches a touchdown, I'm sure Mott had something to do with it, right? Five and a half gone by. First quarter, no score. First down, Patriots from their 40. And Grogan unleashes. Almost picked off. Charles Jackson should have had it. Intended for Irving Fryer. Irving Fryer. Bud Carson said one of the key, well, the key to that defense that we've been talking about leading the National Football League is Joe Klecko right here, 73. Look at the penetration. He gets into the pocket, forces Grogan to throw this ball a little quicker than he'd like to before he can look around to see where the linebackers are, and Jackson, 55, nearly picked it off. Steve Grogan, a man who once started 76 straight games and then sat, did not play for 18 straight prior to last week. He had not played since the third game of last year. Second and ten. And again, Brogan goes deep, looking for Morgan, who is uh, step for step with Bobby Jackson. Jets playing very aggressively, Marv. Tight man-to-man -man coverage in the secondary and a lot of pressure on Grogan. That time he had one-on-one, -on -one, but uh, good coverage on the play. Brogan is now one for five. The only completion to Irving Fryer for 16 yards. He has missed his last four. Joe Walton says, I like this style of defense. I hired Bud Carson because he has an aggressive style of defense. Third down and 10 from the New England 40. Here they come.
Eric Glenn covering Cedric Jones. And the punting unit comes on. Watch the linebackers on the left of your screen. There'll be six men rushing. That leaves five in the secondary to cover five man on man. Now you see good coverage, good tight coverage. Grogan has to throw the ball a little quicker. That pressure in the secondary, what it's going to do to Grogan is he's going to have a low completion percentage. If, if he hits one, he's liable to get a big play out of him. Camarillo's first punt was a 26-yarder. That's Kirk Springs back at his 15. Here's Springs. Going sideline. Beautiful return by Springs. A 48-yard punt, but Springs brought it back for 40. Springs and Humphrey, the two return men for the New York Jets, lead the National Football League in their own category. Springs and punt return right up the sideline. They just haven't had enough returns to qualify. But their yardage leads the league in both categories as Camarillo has to make the tackle or it help slow him down. So the Jets first out of the New England 48-yard line. That's sold in motion. O'Brien able to complete. Raymond Claiborne stopping Wesley Walker. Did not catch a pass against Miami on Monday night, making it back. A couple of weeks ago, after missing the first four games with a knee injury, still not 100%. And, of course, uh, Walker's career has been marred by injury. Nine-yard pickup. Second and one. Actually, O'Brien had the first down, but uh, chose to throw it, intended for Schuler, and a flag is down. That was a screen designed to be to the right side, and the Patriots had it smelled out very well. The illegal use of hands on the uh, Jets. O'Brien pulled it down and came up the middle and uh, could have ran for some yardage. Number 87, offensive pass interference. Still second down, 10-yard penalty. And that is Kurt Sohn called on the penalty. A lot of times, Marv, when you see a flag thrown very late in a play, it'll be offensive pass interference because the officials will see an offensive oh, receiver block downfield, for instance, but if the ball is not thrown, then it's not offensive pass interference, but if the quarterback does throw it, then the flag goes. Now Walker to the right, so left. Second and 11. Marion Walker running for the first down and some more. Chased out by the free safety Fred Marriott. 15-yard pickup for Bobber. First down for the Jets. Jets with the first down, eight and a half remaining in this first quarter. The Jets and the Patriots are scoreless. Ball is at the 34-yard line. And we'd like to welcome those of you who have been viewing the Cincinnati and Houston game with the uh, Oilers meeting the Bengals. First down at the 34-yard line, and penalty flags. All over the field. Andre Tippett and Joe Fields getting together at uh, close quarters. All right, here's Fred Silva. Five <laughs> yards, higher line. Still first down. What happens there, Marv, a lot of times the center may forget a snap count or the quarterback may delay his cadence a little bit and the, when the entire line jumps, it's usually the center may have uh, uh, forgotten the snap count. And while the Patriots have been riddled by mistakes throughout the season, uh, the Jets have been virtually mistake-free and here they've been hit uh, with the two penalties. First down 15, this is Hector. Johnny Hector dancing his way to the 31. Johnny Rampert, inside linebacker, and the free safety Fred Marion combining on the stop. Freeman McNeil has really carried this Jet ball club. As Joe Walton says, he's the pulse of our offense. But Johnny Hector has helped out, and O'Brien. I've been very impressed with uh, O'Brien, not only in this ball game in the short time we've played, but also in the five games that the Jets have uh, won this year. Hector picked up seven, second down, and eight. And O'Brien goes up top and deep. And it 
was intercepted. Pass intended for Walker, picked off by Raymond Claymore. As soon as I tell you I'm impressed with O'Brien, <laughs> my man throws an interception. A little play action fake, he just un under threw the ball a little bit. Watch him roll to his left, play action. Good time to throw the deep pass because the other team on their 40-yard line doesn't expect you to throw deep. He threw the ball too far to the inside and too short. He needed to get the ball to the back of the end zone. Only the fourth time he's been intercepted this season, but uh, only the second since opening day. This is James. James. Short pickup. Joe Plecko right there. This. Ken O'Brien, who has done it in what the coaches categorize as efficient fashion. He's been very efficient because he's not turned the ball over. Claiborne, with a big interception for a touchdown last week against the Buffalo Bills, is one of the key men on that defense that you want to make sure you know where he is all the time because he can make some big plays. Claiborne's fourth interception of the year, second and eight from the Patriot, 22. Draw play for James. Nice call on a delay. Craig James, who killed the Jets here last season. You may recall, Jets got off to that 6-2 and two start. We're at the verge of blowing out the Patriots. Patriots came from behind, came back from a 20-3 deficit, and they were led by that guy, Craig James. It's just a little draw play. You see 56 Mel has his hole covered, but James sees it and slides over to his left, making a good run and a good hit by uh, Springs. Good tackle. 13-yard pickup, first down from the 35. And it's James again. Out to the 42. So another seven for James. Mark Gastineau on the stop. James has really been the outspoken spoken back of these uh, offensive backs for the Patriots about not getting to play. He is the fullback. Normally he is a halfback. Raymond Berry has had him at fullback most of the season because he wants Tony Collins in at halfback, playing the two of them together. And, and James is really working best with the draw plays. Second down and three. Fryer right, Morgan left. And again to the ground. First down, picked up. So James getting the work. Barry Bennett, Kyle Clifton on the stop. And right here, we're set for another update. Let's go to Ahmad Rashad. All right, Marvin, Cleveland, 34 seconds remaining. The Raiders trail by six. It's fourth and goal from the eight. Mark Wilson finds Todd Christensen in the end zone. 20 to 20 tie. Chris Barr gets the extra point. The Raiders lead it 21 to 20 as seconds remaining. Thank you, Alon. First down for the Patriots from the 48. And Irvin. Irving Fryer dropped an easy reception. You call it right, Marv. It was right in his hands. A good play, a good call by Grogan. The Jets having the ball run down their throat the last three or four times, had a blitz on, play action on first down and on the money. Fryer could have caught that one and possibly run it into the end zone. Second and 10. New England at its 48. Five minutes, 13 seconds remaining. First quarter, no score. Steve Grogan last Sunday against Buffalo, 15 for 19, 282 yards. Beautifully intended for Stanley Morgan. 35 is Kerry Glad, a 10th round draft put, a rookie out of Minnesota who has subbed from time to time for Bobby Jackson and has played well. He's been used as an extra defensive back here today. And anytime you have an aggressive defense, such as Bud Carson's Jets are, Marv, they are very aggressive, attacking all the time. The offense can get some big plays in by being aggressive down the field. And as I said earlier, you may not complete a lot of passes, but when you do, they're going to be big plays. 
Denver in front of Seattle in a big one in the first quarter. Third down and ten. Look, look at the Jets all up there across the line of scrimmage. And Brogan unleashes for Morgan. And this time, pass interference will be called on Kerry Glenn. It's a big, tough responsibility for a rookie like Glenn to cover man-to-man. -man. They had a lot of pressure on Grogan, and he didn't have much time. He just threw the ball out there, and Glenn committed the foul. Number 35, defensive pass interference. First down. And as we mentioned earlier, Stanley Morgan has had a number of uh, prolific games against the Jets. And here's Morgan in the battle with Glenn. Glenn is not going to see this ball. That's his problem. He tries to look back, but it's too late, and then runs over Morgan. Back live, first down, Patriots of the Jet 22. This is Tony Collins. Collins running it to the 15, picked up seven. Kyle Clifton forced him out of bounds. Patriots searching for many of the oldies but goodies, guys who have done it against the Jets in the past, and uh, this guy has uh, certainly uh, done it a couple of years ago, back in 83, set a club record, running for 212 yards, three touchdowns against the Jets. Made the Pro Bowl two years ago, Lamar, and did it mainly from the I formation, which he ran that play from. Second down, three, at the Jet 15. And here's James, bottled up at the line. Jackson, Pleco, Gastineau all involved. Craig James in his second season out of SMU last year. He joined New England after a year with the Washington Federals in the USFL and led the Patriots in rushing. It's been an up and down year uh, for James. The New England running game has been virtually invisible. And inside the 20 where the Patriots are now, they have not been very successful this year, Mark. Scoring only four touchdowns in 14 attempts inside the 20-yard line. Third down and three. Look at the Jets up there. Threatening to blitz. Are they going to drop back? Here they come. And Rogan connects with the tight end, Lynn Dawson, for the first down. It'll be a first and goal. Donnie Elder with the tackle on number 87, Lynn Dawson. Jets continue to put pressure on Grogan. That leaves man-to-man -man coverage. Elder, 37, trying to cover the taller. Lynn Dawson makes a good tackle to prevent the touchdown. Last week against Buffalo, the tight ends for the Patriots did not catch a pass. And last year, they were the dominant receivers in this Patriot offense, which was a lot different than it is this year. Tenth play of the drive. First and goal from the five to the ground. Kyle Clifton on the stop. Steve Brogan, who is calling the plays, mixing them up very effectively. And he is running on second down and throwing a lot on first down, throwing before the Jets get an opportunity to get their four-man line in there and their nickelbacks throwing on first down and running on second. O.C. Tartupo has come on. Second and goal from the two. They go to Weathers, and he's stacked up. Raymond Berry with the short yardage combination. Robert Weathers, O.C. Tartupo, and Weathers stopped by Jackson and Clifton. Kyle Clifton with a big hit. Coming right up the middle as Raymond Berry uh, talking it over said he was going to let Steve Grogan call his own plays today. And I think uh, there was some some talk earlier in the week that Grogan says, well, no, I don't think I should. But uh, he talked it over and uh, Steve's calling him today. Felt he was not as familiar uh, with the plays as the coaches hadn't seen enough film. Third and goal from the two. Play action and Grogan gets it away. Now, that was a risky pass. He actually had his back to the end zone and tended for the other tight end, Derek Ramsey. Well, he had his man open. And he's Rogan shaken up. seems to be shaken up, getting up very slowly. 
here's a mistake right here, I think. Not that Easton is coming in to play quarterback, but Easton coming in to hold for the field goal attempt. Yeah, we were surprised by that. Uh, there was some discussion before the game as to who would do the holding. Here's a look at uh, the rush on Grogan. Oh, he gets hit by uh, Gastineau and Klecko in the back and front. Looks like he may have just gotten some, uh, his wind knocked out of him. Oh, I think he just, they're taking his pulse. Looks to me like he was sandwiched in between two defensive linemen, got the wind knocked out of him, but... I'm really surprised that, that uh, Eason, with a, a slightly separated shoulder, is in there holding because if the ball were bobbled or anything, he's free game. Uh, he, could, uh, he could get that shoulder hurt a lot worse. Apparently, Tony Franklin is more comfortable. Uh, There's no Eason. question yes. about that. We're talking with Eason before the game, he said Franklin was really nervous. He really wanted me to hold. 19-yard attempt for Franklin, who has missed his last two. This one is good, but a flag throw. Tony Franklin had hit six in a row, missed his last two from 47 and from 20. And the Patriots uh, seem to feel that the flag is against the Jets. Here is the call. Now Fred Silva was about to uh, give the indication and uh, discussing it with New England players. I would like to uh, welcome those of you who have been watching the L.A. Raiders and the Cleveland Browns. Raiders just squeaking by, coming from behind. And right, here's Fred Silva. Defense, offside, decline, successful field goal. So the 19-yard field goal by Franklin is good, and the Patriots lead it by the score of 3 to nothing. Uh, we're told that Steve Grogan had the wind knocked out of him, and he's okay. I'm sure there's real, some real concern over there on the sideline before uh, they knew exactly what it was, because then they would have had to go to Ramsey, who they just picked up uh, and started practicing Thursday. He was with them before Tom Ramsey, but uh, certainly doesn't know the offense as well as Steve Grogan. Tom Ramsey rejoining the club this week. He was used sparingly in preseason. It signed with New England back in July of 84 following a stint in the USFL. And the uh, Patriots do not want to use Eason under any conditions uh, taking snaps. Well, Patriots all over the Jets in this first quarter but have only three points to show for it with a minute 56 remaining in the quarter. And uh, there is uh, Tony Franklin who usually takes that right shoe off and I'm told actually has had to uh, hide it at various places <laughs> on the field because he has lost three of his shoes. What's going on? And he cannot solve the mystery. Defensive lineman got to take We never liked those kickers. And here is Kurt Spring. Bobby Humphrey looking to lead the way at a hard hit. Jarring Springs as he crossed the 20. Jim Bowman, who has been a superb special teams player, a rookie from Central Michigan, making that hit. 16-yard return from Springs as the Patriots uh, look to keep it away from the explosive Bobby Humphrey. The Jets first down from their 24-yard line. Ken O'Brien, the quarterback, the Jets opening with Marion Barber and Johnny Hector. O'Brien had a bit too much on it, intended for Hector. For those of you who are just joining us, Freeman McNeil, Coming into today, the leading rusher in the NFL had the 173 yards against the Dolphins on Monday night, sitting it out at the moment because he comes out of that game uh, with back spasms. He's all battered. Says so some of the Dolphin players were sticking elbows in him all, all night long on Monday. I don't know. Uh, Dolphins week. did that? <laughs> well, they never did it to me. <laughs> Second and ten. And Hector. Running it out to the 28-yard line. Steve Nelson on the stop. Minute and a half to go in this first quarter. 
the It'll be a third down and five. Their third down efficiency is the best in the National Football League. And the Patriots, as I mentioned a little earlier, are second or third. Third against third down conversion. Second overall. Ryan completing the uh, jump pass. And let's see, they are going to rule it as a completion and a fumble and recovered by Lippitt of the Patriots. JoJo Townsell had possession and coughed it up. The Jets doing exactly the opposite of what they came into this game. Offensively, not turning the ball over, have already turned it over twice. We'll be right back. And this, the 50th meeting between the uh, Patriots and the Jets. Here's a collector's item. The program for game two of the AFL season back in 1960. First meeting between the Patriots and Jets, game one, by the then Boston Patriots. Just under a minute to go, first quarter. Patriots lead the Jets 3-0. First and 10 for the Jet, 37. James. Put a move on, but Lance Bell did not go for it. What happened was Gilbo, 94, was slanting to the inside, and Mel was covering up for him on the outside. A little crisscrossing going on in the uh, defensive front for the Jets. Patriots taking possession following that fumble by receiver Jojo Townsell. Second and 11th. Here's the takeaways and the giveaways. The difference is the key thing. Plus seven for the Jets, minus seven for the Pats but the Jets turning it over twice already in the first quarter. Out of 15 seconds left, first quarter. Out of the shotgun, Rogan has to fall on it. And he's had some problems in taking the snap a second time that he's had difficulty with the shotgun. Well, I, you sometimes, I, didn't, I wasn't watching where the snap hit him, but I was looking downfield. But a lot of times when you have Klecko lining up on your nose and getting a lot of penetration, the center sometimes snaps the ball a little quickly and gets into his block. So indirectly, Klecko may have been uh, responsible for that bad snap. Let's take a look and see. Klecko, 73, as you saw the ball going to the left side of Grogan. Give the responsibility for that for Joe Klecko. And that is the end of the first quarter with the score. The Patriots three, the Jets nothing. Welcome back to Foxborough, Massachusetts. This is Marv Albert with Bob Greasy. Patriots on a 19-yard field goal by Tony Franklin lead the Jets by the score of three nothing. It has been a mistake-filled first quarter uh, for the Jets who come off the 23-7 win over the uh, Miami Dolphins this past Monday night. The Jets come in at 5-1 and one in sole possession of first place in the AFC East. In fact, have the best record in the AFC and alone at the top of the standings for the first time since 1969. The year after the uh, victory of Super Bowl three, the 5-1 and one start, the very best in Jets history while the Patriots at 3-3 three and three, uh, coming in. Joe Walton says we're guardedly optimistic following the Dolphins on Monday night. They are 0-3 the following week. And to add something to that, the Monday night team that's had to travel the following Sunday has not won a game. The Jets are in that all, situation. All the options. <laughs> guardedly optimistic, huh, Bob? Yes. Guardedly. All right, third down and 18. Look out. Mark Gastineau who always says he is programmed to get the quarterback, although Boomer Esiason of Cincinnati did not uh, appreciate uh, that statement two weeks ago. Number 99, five yards. And Gastino offside. I don't know, that was a close call. <laughs> Gastino, one of the quickest defensive linemen off the ball, is going to get caught that way a few times, and I'm sure Grogan, the veteran, is stuttering his cadence. He's looking over right at him to make sure that Gastino can hear the count. He ought to grab the quarterback at that point or try to get back. Third down, 13. At the Jet, 42. And Rogan going deep once again. Intended for Cedric Jones. Rogan is taking a beating. 
Jones was open on the play, Marv. If he could have stepped up a little bit into the pocket and got a little bit more zing on that, watch from the right side of your screen. It's going to be gas to know. <laughs> That's tough to throw when you're going backwards. To get the idea, the Jets would like to see Tom Ramsey <laughs> inserted into this uh, ball game with the knowledge that uh, we will not see uh, Tony Eason. And here is Camarillo getting set to punt to Springs, looking to angle. Penalty marker down. With Camarillo not permitting the return. There is Rich Camarillo out of the University of Washington in his fourth season. It is a 35-yard punt if it uh, holds up. I'm sure they're going to make him punt this one over again. Uh... Yep, here is uh, Camarillo. 23 on the kicking team. Illegally downfield. He'll repeat a fourth down. That is the uh, quarterback, Ernest Gibson. Call down the penalty, so Camarillo will punt again. Jets defense, Marv, doing a good job of stopping the Patriots at midfield after that turnover. The very collegiate-looking Joe Walton in his new sweater. Popular sweater around New York, I understand, this week. Jets switchboard was uh, besieged by requests following the uh, victory on Monday night. It's Walton wall the sweater. Nice punt. A beauty. Camarillo getting it out inside the five. 42-yard punt. When we return, the Jets take over deep in their territory. Following the beautiful punt by Rich Camarillo, the Jets first down from their five. Now Tony Page in the backfield, along with Johnny Hector. A mix-up. But O'Brien gets it away and has Schuler. So the tight end, Mickey Schuler, the money receiver for this uh, Jet team, stopped by Steve Nelson and gets the Jets out of it, out of a big jam. If you ever want to question, as we look at Page and his blocking and picking up uh, Tippett, if you ever want to question Joe Walton and what he feels about his young quarterback, O'Brien, this tells you a lot. Backed up inside your own five-yard line. He's already thrown two interceptions, or one interception and one turnover. Calls a big play to get him out of the hole. And it's a 28-yard pickup. Johnny Hector stopped by Larry McGrew. There's Rod Rust, the defensive coordinator for the Patriots. When Raymond Berry was hired as the head coach last year to replace Ron Meyer, the first thing he did was rehire this man right here, Rod Russ. Steve Nelson, the defensive captain, says this man is a genius. So we've got two geniuses, <laughs> defensive coordinators in this game. Second down and five from the Jet 38. Here's Hector. Picked up a couple. It'll set a uh, third and just shy of three. Marion and Nelson combining on the stop. Check of the scoreboard. Let's swing around the NFL. Raiders come from behind, beating Cleveland, Minnesota over San Diego. These are all final scores. Philadelphia getting by Dallas, 16-14. Giants over Washington. Rams shutting out Kansas City. Third down, and about three. Jets from their 40. O'Brien has Walker for a first down. Second reception by Wesley Walker. Ronnie Lippett coming up from the left corner to make the tackle. So O'Brien looking to get Walker involved. Houston walloping Cincinnati 44-27. Pittsburgh stops a three-game losing streak. Cardinals continue to stagger. Detroit over San Francisco, 23-21. They have a losing record, 3-4, and four, Super Bowl champion from last year. And Atlanta beats New Orleans. First out, Jets from their 46. Here's Hector. And he's hit back behind the line. Steve Nelson, the inside linebacker. 
on the stop. It's Nelson, Tippett, Rembert, and McGrew. Don Blackman sending it out because of an injury. So McGrew to the outside, and Johnny Rembert is uh, playing the inside linebacking uh, position on the right. The linebacking core is really a strength of that defense with Tippett and Blackman, who is not playing today, and McGrew, as you mentioned, but Nelson is the one, the brains, that really holds that thing together. Second down and 12. O'Brien showing poise hanging in, but the pass took off intended for Wesley Walker. Just sailed a little bit on him. He had uh, pretty good protection. He stepped up in the pocket and uh, just sailed on you a little bit. He has played it to this point uh, very well in terms of uh, the short gains looking for the tight end. Has not looked to open it up, but O'Brien uh, has the good arm. Do you see eventually... Uh, the Jets going for the bomb from Ken O'Brien. Oh, I think so. I think Joe Walton is handling very well up to this point. Third down and 12. And let's see, that may be a first down. Wesley Walker, the receiver, was bumped back by Lippitt. We'll have to see where they spot it. And it's uh, right. It's, it looks to be in line with the uh, first down marker. And uh, they will bring out the yardsticks. He is to so Walker comes up with his uh, third catch, and it is just short. Two inches short. And what I meant by how they've handled O'Brien is they have really relied on Freeman McNeil, as we said, really the heart and soul and the pulse of the offense. And they have really downplayed O'Brien's part. But the more they they go to other people like Hector and O'Brien and take some of the pressure off of uh, McNeil, then O'Brien is going to open up a little bit. And I think that's good because he's, he's operating from a base of confidence and strength. Fourth and inches. And O'Brien picking up the first down. On the keeper, O'Brien has it. Ken Sims. Covering up Ken O'Brien. 10 minutes, 45 seconds to go in this first half. Patriots lead the Jets 3-0 on a 19-yard field goal by Tony Franklin. In the first quarter, the uh, Patriots controlling the ball in the first quarter, but have only three points to show for a long drive. First down at the New England, 43. Hector. Johnny Hector with acceleration. Stopped by Andre Tippett. Hector getting to the 36-yard uh, line. This is not fair. Tippett, nobody blocks him. <laughs> Hector says, I got to have some help on that guy. Tippett, Pro Bowl player last year. One of the leaders of this defense. He, is, uh, he has something special if, as far as defensive linebackers are concerned. Second down and three. From the Patriot, 36. Hector, the lone deep back. Short setup, and O'Brien goes deep. Intended for Wesley Walker, who was suddenly a prominent part of this uh, Jet offensive scheme. Your question two plays ago, Marv, about opening up the game. O'Brien, uh, through Joe Walton, calling the plays on the sideline. They're on about the 35-yard line going in. Again, a lot of defensive teams don't expect you to throw the ball into the end zone from this area. They think you're going to throw something shorter. Going for the end zone, airing it out. Third down and three. Nine and a half remaining in this first half. And it's deflected. Had it down to stop the jet drive. Looked to be Julius Adams who got a piece of it. Julius Adams replacing the injured Toby Williams, making his third straight start. There he is, number 85, starting at right defensive end. He says 
number 85 will retire after 1985. This his final year, 14 seasons in the NFL. And Pat Leahy will attempt a 53-yard field goal. He is 10 for 15 on the season. Three of four against Miami. Leahy has tied the score at three. Connecting from 53. That is his career high. We'll be right back. And here's Pat Leahy, who has had an excellent year kicking off 33 kickoffs this season. 17 have not been returned, making number 18. Leahy, who moments ago connected for that career high 53 yard field goal, does the job kicking off. Kicking down win, but you still have to kick it between the uprights. Everybody's checking it out. Ryan's pretty sure. <laughs> Leahy says, I'll see it. I believe when oh, I see it. Oh, look at Bogus Leahy Fan Club. Obviously not the man who put the sign up. <laughs> and the Patriots now, first and ten from the 20, 9.25 to go. In this first half, we're tied at three. Greg James, who has gotten quite a bit of work, as requested, he has been saying right throughout that he's not carrying the ball enough. A uh, statement made on the several occasions the last couple of years by his running mate, Tony Collins. Well, I'm sure he would not like to run into Klecko, 73, as he gets the better portion of Brock, number 58, throws him aside. And that is the key to that defense, the man over the nose. If he can control the nose, control the center, and he can get into the backfield. Second down, 10, no game for James. And now broken to throw. And has the first down. So Grogan completes to Morgan. A time a uh, shorter route between Grogan and Morgan. Kerry Glenn on the coverage had picked up 13. It's kind of interesting for me, Marv, to watch the defensive line and the linebackers as they blitz in uh, on, on most uh, of these plays. But Grogan throwing the ball off of his back foot. I remember uh, the game Monday night. The Jets didn't sack Marino but one time, but they pressured him enough to, to have, make him have his worst stats as a pro. First down, Patriots from their 33. James, close to the first down marker. Bobby Jackson on the stop. Back in Foxborough, Marv Albert with Bob Greasy, New York Jets, New England Patriots tied at three. 19-yard field goal in the first quarter by Tony Franklin and a 53-yard field goal by Pat Leahy just moments ago. Seven and a half left in this first half. Patriots with a second and one. And James right at the marker. Mel and Clifton applying the hit. Steve Grogan replacing the injured Tony Eason out with that left shoulder separation. Grogan was shaken up uh, earlier in the game. And uh, there's uh, Eason. I think Eason this is knows. good for him, I think it's good. Eason has not been playing well. The offense for the Patriots has not been going well. And uh, Eason have been getting a lot of booze. And I think for him to stand on the sideline and take some of the pressure off of him for a couple of games would be good for him mentally. Patriots did not pick up the first down. Now here is Grogan on a sneak, and he has it. So Grogan picks up the first down. Bob, through your illustrious career, you're smiling as I say that. Yeah, I say Always with a smile. Were you ever booed? <laughs> I'm there not talking about in the broadcast booth <laughs> as a player. There isn't a quarterback that hasn't played for any length of time that hasn't been booed and has gone through what Eason uh, is going through the last couple of weeks. Grogan went through it. In fact, he talked with Eason during the week. And I'll uh, talk about that a little bit more after this play. All right, first down, Patriots from their 44. And here's the swing for James. Rich Miano comes up along with Lance Bell. Combining on the stop, it'll set up a second and one, and the Patriots are executing very well. When you were booed, did you feel the boos were uh, justified? Well, I, don't, I didn't think they were anything personal. 
uh, certainly uh, perhaps uh, you thought wrong <laughs> yeah maybe they were <laughs> but they they are displeased with the way you're playing not at your uh, your, your personal uh, being but i think the way grogan went over and helped Eason this week is uh, has a lot to say for him all right second down play and james able to slash across for the first down clifton and jackson combining on the stop when you are booed on a regular basis do you get annoyed at the fans i mean you, you begin to take it personally even though you obviously they're booing you regarding your football what else will they be well, booing you about it regarding right. your football abilities but you start getting mad at the, at well, the home fans i think you get frustrated with them and i think the best thing is for uh, steve grogan to come on and easton to get off the field and see if if grogan can do better if easton is really the problem or if it's the team First out at the 45-yard line. James, 36 yards, 11 carries. Brogan going sideline. And Bobby Jackson stopping Stanley Morgan and had some difficulty with Morgan. The other thing I think this is going to do, Marv, this is a more open offense that the Patriots are using. We talked about Raymond Berry earlier had been calling the plays a little bit too conservative. I think what this will do for Raymond is be open his eyes a little bit. Say, hey, we have got the talent. We've got the Stanley Morgans and the Irving Friars and all these big play people that Craig James is in the Collins. Maybe we should be a little bit more open and get the ball to him. 11-yard pass play. Morgan's second catch of the day. First down at the Jet 34. Grogan tripped up by Mel. Steve Grogan, who earlier this uh, week said, well, I'm not what I was uh, a couple of a couple of seasons back, but I'm not quite in a wheelchair. He still does have some mobility. Grogan on the run used to strike fear in the hearts of a lot of defensive backs, but uh, age has, uh, has slowed him a little bit, shall we say. 32 years old, 11th season out of Kansas State, a fifth-round draft pick back in 1975. Second down at eight. Here's Collins. To the 27th. Picked up four. Marty Lyons on the stop. 320. Remaining in this first half, the Jets and the Patriots are tied at three. It'll be a third down and four. It'll be third down. And four. Patriots at the Jet 27. Ryan Holloway, Steve Moore at the tackles. John Hanna, Ron Wooten at the guards. The center is Pete Brock. James and Cullins are the running backs. And Brogan fires deep. Irving Fryer, the intended receiver, Kerry Glenn on the coverage. Kerry Glenn was on the coverage, but Gastineau was the reason this ball was not complete because Fryer gets down past him a little bit, enough to be open if the ball was thrown further downfield. Again, it was open, but the reason it was not better thrown, Mar, was because Gastineau had just knocked Grogan uh, end over end. So once again, an impressive Patriot drive is stopped. They get to the uh, 27, and they're forced to settle for the uh, field goal. Franklin will hit from 19 earlier, now attempting from 44, and here is Eason to put the ball down. A high snap. And it is good. And look out, Bobby Jackson getting involved with Tony Franklin. If I were Tony Franklin, I think I'd go for some higher numbers. <laughs> well, Franklin at five foot eight, Bobby Jackson at uh, five foot ten. We'll be right back with 237 remaining in this first half. The Patriots now lead the Jets by the score of six to three. Tony Franklin hitting on a 44-yard field goal, and now Franklin. Getting set to kick off. And Springs will stay right there. So they'll bring it out to the 20-yard uh, line. One of the more aggressive 
field goal conclusions. Watch this as uh, Eason puts it down. You'll see Franklin hit it from uh, 44. Now watch number 40 to the right. That's Bobby Jackson. No harm, no foul so far. Now, what, wait a minute, what's this? What do you do that for, Marv? Huh? It's only a bit upset. Maybe Jackson is the guy who's been hiding his shoe. <laughs> Probably. Jackson Bobby Jackson, uh, an aggressive player there. Looking across the field. Uh, he has been involved in uh, a few many scraps. O'Brien on first down. With time. And that is brought down. Ken Sims on the sack. His third of the season. Patriots with their second sack of the day. I tell you, and he was looking for Mickey Schuler, his tight end downfield, and Steve Nelson was all over him. Nelson, a very smart linebacker, knows who they like to go to in certain situations. Loss of two, second down and 12. Off the draw, Johnny Hector is stopped. And the Patriots doing a good job. Again, it's Sims, who has had a, a strong first half. It'll be a third down and 12. And a timeout has been called by the Jets. Two minutes, nine seconds to go. Third down, 11. Jets from their 19. Johnny Hector could not find running room. And then with a good second effort, picked up some additional yardage. Andre Tippett breaking him down. And we have some words between Bobber and Tippett. Two minutes remaining in this first half. We'll be back after these words. Dave Jennings getting set to punt for the third time this afternoon. Previous punts for 40 and 48 yards. And it's Irving Fryer back at his 35. Coming in, Fryer second in the AFC, averaging just under 12 per punt return. Colton Walker now with the uh, Los Angeles Raiders going into today's play, leading in that department. Two minutes left, first half. And the Patriots lead the Jets 6-3. And Jennings just did get it off. Here's Fryer. Chased by Humphrey. Penalty marker is down. Rusty Gilbo on the stop. But a flag down, a 41-yard punt, and a seven-yard return. Did you see Fryer leap over? I'll tell you, when you do that, you when you see it, you say, Receiving I can... Team number 30, illegal block in the back, above the waist, 10 yards, and it'll be a first down. It's called on Mosi Tatupu. I'm sure Raymond Berry doesn't like to see his valuable commodity uh, jumping over defensive players because it's a good idea when you first see it, but then when you get up there and you're coming down and about three other defenders are coming at you, you wished you hadn't done it. New England first down at their 33. <laughs> Collins and James were all the running backs. And the swing could not be handled by Craig James. Slightly underthrown. Second down and 10. Earlier today, Raiders coming from behind, defeating Cleveland. Minnesota beating San Diego. These are final scores. Philadelphia over Dallas. The Giants knocking off Washington. The Rams beating Kansas City. Houston over Cincinnati. And coming up at halftime, a complete look around the NFL on NFL 85. Second and 10 at the 33. Again, the uh, sideline of 10. Irving Fryer, the intended receiver, Lance Bell, on the coverage. Here's Fryer, first pick in last year's draft out of Nebraska, coming off an injury play rookie season. Had a terrific day last week against Buffalo, his best in the NFL. Plays five different instruments, did you know that? No kidding. Yeah. Reading that press brochure once again under the heading of personal. 
not very good statistics for Grogan, but uh, he has moved the ball club. Third down and 10. Minute and 40 to go, first half. And Grogan guns it short of the first down. Let's see, did he short hop it? Now they say uh, he caught it, Irving Fryer making the catch, but just short. Take a look at the route that is run. It's just going to be a down and out, but Grogan a little bit tentative. Throws the ball a little bit short. The last two or three passes, so a little bit short. He's a little rusty. Hasn't played in a long time. I'm sure he'll get better as the game goes on. And Rich Camarillo dropping back to punt for the fourth time today. He is at his 27. That's Kirk Springs. Back at his 20. Just under a minute to go. First half. And a good punt. Fair catch called by Springs. And the Jets will take over following the 42-yard punt by Camarillo. Back in Foxborough, 48 seconds left. First half, Jets take over from their 17. O'Brien almost had it picked off by Claymore, who intercepted earlier Kurt Sohn, the intended receiver. Claiborne picked off a pass very similar to this one last week in this same area and ran in man-to-man -man coverage, eyeballing him all the time. You see, he got his hands up, just didn't make the catch. Patriots dropping several passes last week in that bad weather that could have been intercepted. Second and 10. O'Brien a 7 for 13, only 69 yards. This is Hector tripped up across the 20 by Sims. And the uh, clock is running. Patriots with a 6-3 lead. Jets looking to go in their hurry-up offense. And O'Brien just did get it away. NFL 85 with Bob Costas, Ahmad Rashad, Pete Axtell. A look around uh, the NFL. All right, here's Jennings. Back at his six-yard line. Running for the fourth time today, Irving Fryer awaits the punt at his 40. Line drive. And Fryer on the fair catch with 12 seconds remaining in the half. A 35-yard punt by Jennings. So the New England Patriots back to the offense for these uh, final seconds of the half. New England coming in at three and three. They've beaten Green Bay, Buffalo twice. They've lost to the Raiders, the Bears, and the Browns. Joe Walton with uh, fond memories of a year ago. And he reminded uh, his players of that all week, uh, you can be sure. Patriots coming from behind to knock off the Jets uh, in the game here last season. And Grogan unleashes. It's a Hail Mary, and it nearly worked. The volleyball effect applied between Fryer and Morgan. It's a heck of a play. Was it Fryer who tipped the ball? I look to be Morgan who got a piece of it. Let's see. This is the ideal situation. The first man that tries to catch gets his hand on the ball. It's Morgan, 86. Watch him tips it in the air further back. They work on this, except the second man should have tried to catch it, not tip it again. It's very tough to catch it after it's tipped twice. Right there, well, Fryer couldn't get his hands on it, but it was a good good effort by the Patriots. So they go for the gadget play, a play they attempted during the preseason. Three seconds to go in the first half. And here's Kruger looking to throw and pick off. Lance Bell. Lance running around in circles <laughs> as time runs out. He looked like he was at a picnic without a pass. So Bell with his second interception of the season. 
And that is the end of the first half here in Foxborough with the Patriots leading the Jets by the score of 6-3. to three. We'll be back in a... Back in Foxborough, Marv Albert with Bob Greasy at halftime. The Patriots leading the Jets by the score of 6-3. to three. A first half that saw the Jets keep Freeman McNeil on the sideline off the uh, battering he took this past Monday night uh, in the victory over Miami. As a result, the Jets, who averaged better than 157 yards on the ground throughout the season among the leaders in that department of the NFL, have picked up only 40 yards rushing to this point. And Joe Walton has said he's our, he is the pulse of our offense. Uh, Marvin Powell says he's our meal ticket. But you have to have more than Freeman McNeil. But I, and I think that Walton would like to get through this ball game without using him. But I would not be surprised to see him play some in the second half if the offense doesn't pick up in the first two series. Ken O'Brien, 7 for 15, 71 yards. Steve Brogan, only 6 for 20 as we get underway in this second half. And the return by uh, Stefan Starring is tripped up. 17-yard return. Bobby Humphrey on the coverage inside the 20 as we check out the halftime statistics. Only 40 yards rushing for the Jets. And then look down the Jets column where you see the two, two turnovers. Very un, uh, unusual for them to turn the ball over. And not much offense by either team, really. The defenses have been dominating. It has not been a thriller. A 6-3. Patriot lead on the two field goals by Tony Franklin. Pat Leahy hitting for that career-high 53-yard field goal for the Jets score. First down, and Brogan swings it out. Here's Collins. And he's run out of bounds. What's your feeling about Brogan in this uh, first? Meanwhile, flag has been thrown. The fans want a personal foul called on the uh, late hit. Russell Cotter involved. Defense number 27. Personal foul. And it is a personal foul on the late hit thrown by Cotter. Just a little swing pass. Definitely was out of bounds and, and may have thrown the flag as much for hitting up around the head and shoulders as for hitting out of bounds. What's your feeling about uh, Grogan? There have been a couple of good spurts, but you look at the stats, 6 for 20, only 68 yards. No surprise there. We thought that his statistics would be not that good, but what he has done is thrown the ball downfield and really opened it up, and I think he has put some life into this team. He just needs a few more points. Although this was Eason out there right now, Six for 20. Uh, he'd be hearing it from the crowd. You got it. First down for the 39. Fryer on a reverse. Not much. Lance Bell on the stop. The lights are on here at Sullivan Stadium in Foxborough. A very cool, crisp day. Temperature in the 50s. A 19-yard field goal by Franklin in the uh, first quarter. Set up by a Raymond Claiborne interception. Leahy hit from 53 yards away in the second, and then Franklin from 44 for the 6-3 New England lead. Second down and eight from the 40, and Grogan pegs it. Incomplete, intended for Fryer. Bobby Jackson on the coverage. Jets are shuffling in defensive uh, substitutions uh, in and out of the ball game. Steve Grogan said earlier, he says, Bud Carson uses so many different fronts, it's confusing. There is no way a quarterback can keep up as you see the new substitutions, Mullen and, and Glenn and Lyons coming into the ball game, that you can keep up with all the substitutions. In fact, the Jets have a drill during the week where they actually practice substituting their defensive players. They call them by names. Maybe a Raider, robber, you know when to go in and when to come off. Third down and eight for the Patriots from their 40. Brogan throwing the middle. Cedric Jones with a pretty catch. Kerry Glenn on the cover-up from our angle looks to be a first down. Cedric Jones in his fourth season out of Duke. And watch the catch right here. And the protection, good protection by Grogan. The ball is thrown a little bit low. Seems like he falls just before that line, the 50-yard line, and it's going to be very close. Right here are the yardsticks. First catch of the day 
for a Cedric, who is a possession-type receiver. In effect, uh, the burning speed is not there, but does the job and picks up the first down. His head coach, Raymond Berry, many folks in this area consider today's game a uh, credibility game for the Patriots out of Berry's seven victories. He was 4-4 four four last year. Out of the seven wins, four last year, three this season, five have come against Buffalo and Indianapolis. And Collins could not make the turn. Back three of the wins against the Buffalo Bills. Well, they say he hasn't beat a winning team yet, but as we take a look at Hannah, 73, crisscrossing with 76, Holloway, and blocking on Mel. Mel stays to the outside to contain the play. Collins goes ahead to the outside anyway, and Mel makes the play. Two very good players, Hannah and Mel. A lot of people think that Mel should be where Hannah is in January. That's in Hawaii for the Pro Bowl, and uh, I tell you, he has my vote. Second down and nine. Some jumping both sides. No flags. And now we got a flag downfield. Russell Carter broke it up. It was intended for Stanley Morgan. Stanley Morgan was the intended receiver. And it is called on the Jets. Russell Carter getting a little bit anxious. The bottom of your screen, 27, you'll see the release by the receiver to the inside. The jam for five yards is all right. I don't see any Defense, interference on that play. Interference, number 27, first down. So Carter hit for the personal foul a moment ago, and now interference. You can jam the receiver for five yards. Once the ball was thrown, I didn't see any interference. Carter, number one draft pick uh, last season, has played very well in his second year out of SMU. As a rookie, hampered by a string of injuries, but when he played, played solid. First down at the Jet 38. Play action, and Grogan able to go. It is dropped. Lynn Dawson, the tight end, could not hold on. Kyle Clifton on the coverage. Dawson has caught only five passes this season, although he showed signs last year of coming on as a receiver with 39 catches. Derek Ramsey had a, a big year, team record, 66 receptions, but Patriots uh, not looking in the direction of the tight ends this year. Grogan likes to throw to his wide receivers, and I think last year when they were using two tight ends, you obviously had more targets as tight ends. This year they're featuring the wide receivers more. Second and ten at the Jet 38. Fryer to the right, Morgan left. And Grogan within the grasp. Mark Gastineau will get credit for the sack. And that will be four and a half on the season for Gastineau. The Jets have had good pressure on Grogan all day, but they haven't sacked him very often. As we look at Gastineau, Gastineau has put a lot of pressure along with Klecko, 99 at the top of your screen, Wooten, 61. Brock, 58, is having his problems. The thing that Jets have been able to do is penetration. Grogan has been able to get rid of the ball that time, took the sack. Sets it back to a third down at 20. Patriots 6, Jets 3 with early third quarter. Good protection. Right open. Stanley Morgan would like to have that one back. I tell you what, Mark, they're booing Morgan. They're booing somebody right now, but... This is the offense that Tony Eason has been running for the last three weeks. Now, everybody can't have a drop. We saw Collins drop one. Earlier, we saw Fryer. Now, it's Morgan's turn. He's wide open, as you can see. He could have caught that ball and came out the other side and ran in for a touchdown. Morgan had a couple of rough games earlier this year. He came back late because of a hamstring and then had some uh, dropsy difficulties. Had a good one a couple of weeks ago against Cleveland. But a bad play a moment ago and a bad punt by Camarillo. But that takes a good hop. So he is bailed out of that as it lands inside the 20. Up and down day for Camarillo. A 30-yard punt. We'll be back 
after these words. All right, play uh, back in. Johnny Hector as uh, the Jets so run it for two off the right side. Hector on the carry, setting up a second down and eight at the 20. 11 and a half remaining in this third quarter. For a couple more, Andre Tippett, the outside linebacker from the left, number 56, making the stop. The Jets have scored on the first possession of the second half in five straight games. And this is their first possession of this second half. Their offensive line, as we mentioned earlier, has been up and down in their in their wins. And uh, when they've played well, they've usually dominated. And when they haven't, they have struggled. And uh, today they're playing uh, like they're struggling. Third down and six at the 22. O'Brien can't find anyone. And all goes. Ricky Schuller with a nice move to midfield, refusing to go down. Marion and James finally got him down. O'Brien just uh, scrambled around in the backfield until someone got open. The Patriots were playing man-to-man -man coverage and not expecting to have to cover man-to-man -man for that length of time. When we look back, uh, this could be a significant play. 29-yard pass play to Schuler. Schuler in the middle of your screen, number 82, now, as O'Brien runs to the left, he goes back to the right. O'Brien with the presence of mind to look downfield as he is running away from the uh, Patriots and a big play for the Jets. Second catch for Schuler, 56 yards in all. First down at midfield. Play action, flag throw, O'Brien throwing the ball. And again, looking for Wesley Walker. And a penalty down. Referee Fred Silva calling it against the Jets. Illegal shift, two men moving at the same time, refused. So the Jets with a second down play. It'll be a second and ten from midfield. Patriots with a 6-3 lead on a 53-and-44 yard field goal by Tony Franklin. They'll make it a 19-and-44 with Leahy hitting from 53. Five minutes in, third quarter. Hector. Hector with the uh, dancing moves brings inside the 50. Ken Sims on the stop. Johnny Hector in his third season out of Texas A&M. And uh, he has been handling most of the running chores with the absence of Freeman McNeil, who may well sit out the rest of the way. Freeman has not played at all. He had 173 yards on the ground against Miami on Monday night, but uh, took a beating, bothered by back spasms. And the Jets would love to get away with winning one without him. O'Brien getting the time. Overthrowing Wesley Walker. Brett Marion covering Walker. And it sets up a third down and six. Fourth down, Marv. Uh, check that. Fourth down. You know, the, the Jets, this is a tough place to play, a tough place to win. The Jets winning only twice in their last seven appearances here. And uh, when I was playing with the Dolphins, we always had problems playing up here. It's, uh, for some reason, a very difficult place to come and win. <laughs> and Jennings back at his 40. Fifth part of the day for Dave Jennings. Irving Fryer awaits at the 10. And it lands inside the five, down by Bobby Humphrey. So Jennings with a good one. 8.51 left. Third quarter. We'll be right back. 
Marv Albert with Bob Greasy from Foxborough, the New England Patriots leading the New York Jets by the score of six to three. Just under nine minutes remaining in this third quarter. Patriots with Brian Holloway and Steve Moore at the tackles. John Hanna, Ron Wooten at the guards, Pete Brock the center, Steve Grogan replacing the injured Tony Eason at quarterback. Grogan has had some enormous games over the years against the Jets. Uh, to this point, it has not been that. There have been a series of long drives, but the Patriots not able to cash in. Really? James with a short pickup, Lance Bell on the stop. That punt by Jennings went 39 yards, but it was down, and here are the uh, Patriots starting from deep in their territory. This has become a battle in the trenches as 56 Bell plays off of Hanna and stuffs with the help of Clifton, the, runner back, the running back in the hole, but the linebackers for the Jets, Clifton and Bell doing a great job. And again, the Patriots not doing it on the ground, James, the leading rusher with only 39 yards, 12 carries. And Grogan popping deep sideline and incomplete. Pass intended for Stanley Morgan. Bobby Jackson was five yards deeper than Morgan, and Grogan was going to take a look, and if it was there, throw it, and if not, just throw it out of bounds as we look at the completions, 8 of 26 for Grogan for only 82 yards, but his team is ahead. Tony Eason on the right. And that is Tom Ramsey, who was signed just a couple of days ago. Actually re-signed by the uh, Patriots. He is now the, uh, the other Patriot quarterback. Third down play. Incomplete. Stanley Morgan again, the intended receiver covered by Russell Carter, so it's 1-2-3 and punt. And Rich Camarillo will punt for the sixth time this afternoon. Eight minutes remaining in this third quarter. Getting back to the point you brought up earlier, why do you think Foxborough is such a difficult place uh, for visiting teams? It was for you and the Dolphins. The Raiders have had problems here. The Jets have had difficulty against many times weaker uh, Patriot opposition. I don't know what it is, Marv. It's, uh, it's the air. It's the, uh, <laughs> the air. The carpet. Uh, I don't know what it is. All right, here's Springs. Midfield. An excellent coverage by the Patriots. A 51-yard punt. Only a five-yard return. Cedric Jones getting downfield in a hurry. And a timeout has been called. 7.49 left, third quarter. The Jets take over, first down at their 47-yard line. Page and Hector, the running backs, sold in motion. And Hector with a burst and a first down to the 40. Fred Marion. On the stop, Johnny Hector, who has the acceleration that time. He's able to get a good block. 16 carries, 61 yards for Johnny Hector. Hector following the blocks of Fields and Alexander up there in the front wall. Jojo Townsell out to the left side now. First down at the 40. Here's Townsell in motion. Johnny Hector gets the Again, ball. Hector stopped by Johnny Rembert. Larry McGrew is out the, the rest of the way, injured his knee. Outside linebacker McGrew has been replaced by a Brian Ingram. It's a blocking up front coming at you as if you were a defensive back. 98 Owens being blown off the ball by Fields. Joe Fields, a very much underrated center. Joe Fields now the captain of the Jets, is voted by his teammates. Third down, six. Hector stopped by Tippett. At least stopped. <laughs> Annihilated might be a better word. Uh, Tippett playing off the block of Page and making a big play. Mr. Tippett's hideaway. Andre Tippett in his fourth season 
out of Iowa, who has been contained in the uh, sack department. Did come up with one earlier today. Correction, it is now third down. Third down and four at the 34. And a solid hit by Ronnie Lippett on the intended receiver, Kurt So There's Lippett, number 42. Sometimes overly aggressive. And a guy who has been uh, has been picked on. He's been a target, although they have been throwing Claiborne's way today. They've thrown a few times to Claiborne, but Lippitt is going to get more action, obviously, because Claiborne is the is the toughest defensive back in the backfield, and uh, a lot of the corner quarterbacks will go away from Claiborne. All right, Pat Leahy will attempt from 52. He hit a career high 53 order in the second quarter, looking to tie. And he does. Leahy from 53 and now from 52. The Jets in New England. Even at Jets and Patriots tied at 6. 548 remaining third quarter. Pat Leahy who just hit from 52 yards away. Kicking off. Stefan starring with an adventure as it carries through. And uh, they will bring it out. Touch back. The ball will be brought up. Bring it out to the 20. A look at the AFC in progress as we speak. Miami in front of Tampa Bay by 10, 31 to uh, 21. Patriots and Jets, of course, tied here at 6 earlier today. Buffalo knocking off Indianapolis. So the Jets at the moment with a record of 5-1 and one need the victory if uh, Miami wins and the Jets lose. They are in a tie for the top of the AFC East. Dan Marino has thrown for two. Miami leading Tampa Bay 31-21 in the third quarter. First and ten from the 20. Play action. And Grogan, let's see, it's whistled back. He was within the grasp. They will bring it back. First, he ducked away from Charles Jackson. And that will go down as a sack for the Jets. The Jets did some shifting around. Klecko jumped from one side to the other. And the rule is, as you see, the play action fake with 73 Hanna is grasp and control. Now, Jackson misses, but I think that's uh, Gastineau that actually gets over there and gets the credit along with uh, Marty Lyons. And now the crediting Lyons, so the Jets with a second sack of the day. But Carson, the uh, defensive coordinator, calling the signals on the sideline. Second and 18, back at the 13. Flyer, nowhere to go. Stopped at the 18. You know, Bud Carson looking back at the opening day shellacking by the Raiders who knocked off the Jets 31-0 says it was all his fault. He said he had the wrong defensive schemes. He had guys in there who weren't ready and they were tentative against the Raiders. Well, he changed and he's the one in the center of your screen. Uh, he may have changed this 4-3 defense to a 3-4 and he thinks he may have done it, pushed it on him a little bit too quickly. But he's got to be happy the way they're playing it right now. Grogan looking at a third and 11. Throws. There's Stanley Morgan on a post pattern. Grogan doesn't have a lot of time to wait. As you saw, the linebackers were blitzing six men on the rush, and uh, Grogan is holding it as long as he can, and, and he is avoiding the sack, but the pressure from the front six from the Jets is forcing him to throw the ball and throw in completions, and that's why his poor percentage completions uh, here today. And it's the second straight quickie series offensively for the Patriots. That's Kirk Springs. Rich Camarillo will punt for the seventh time from his five. And a short punt. That could have been dangerous. Springs had no choice. He had to play it on the hop. 
A 35-yard punt. We'll be right back. If you Bob, it should be noted the last time the Patriots were involved in a game in which neither team scored a touchdown was back in 1982. That was the uh, famed Ron Meyer snowplow game is what he said. It was a famous game around yeah. here, but I think maybe the special teams may decide this ball game. Both teams have exciting big play uh, return people on their special teams. Jets take over. First down from the 46. We're tied at six. O'Brien with time and fires. Touchdown. Now apparently they're placing it down inches away from the goal line. A 53-yard pass play. Wesley Walker, who has been going deep constantly, opening up the Jet offense, and now it is placed just inside the one. They say that's where his knees touched. First down, play-action pass, a big play for the Jets. Three minutes left, third quarter. And Claiborne stopping Page, who has been the touchdown specialist. His first carry of the day, Page with seven TDs, five on the ground, two as a receiver. In fact, he injured his ankle this past Monday night when he went through a gyration, spiking the ball, and hurt himself after a TD. Look at the long completion to Wesley Walker. The official right there looks to be in the end zone or pretty close. And O'Brien throws for the end zone. Intended for the tight end, Billy Griggs, who has yet to catch a pass in the National Football League. And that play right there shows you a sign of the maturity for Ken O'Brien. Takes one quick look. You don't have a lot. You don't have a long time down there inside the uh, five-yard line. As we go back and look at this uh, long pass to see if he was in the end zone. That's hard to tell. He slid in. His knees hit short. Whether the contact was made. All right, it is a third and goal. Inside the one. And let's see what they roll it. If it is a completion, it will be a fumble. That's what it is. Page pops it up. Garrett Burris. That looked to be an incompletion to me. We'll have to take another look. There's the rookie from Stanford. Garrett Burris on the recovery. It's a fumble. Both feet have to be clearly on the ground. And here we see the Walker catch. He is down right there. It was a good call because his knees were down and contact was made by the defensive uh, man. So a couple of close calls, and the Patriots take over. Fred James. Out to the 10-yard line, Lance Bell able to follow him across. From that last angle, it appeared that Wesley Walker was shy of the goal line. And the Jets have turned it over three times. Townsell with a fumble off the pass reception. And the interception by Claiborne and the fumble here by Page. Two key plays, and I'm sure that Joe Walton is uh, anxious to see those plays again. Second and eight from the 10. Tied at six. Late third. Fryer killing off. James. Bell and Miano combining on the stop short of the first down. Let's take another look at that big flip to Tony Page that was ruled a completion and a fumble. He has to have the ball and his both feet have to be clearly on the ground. One, two, hit. It's a good call. Yes. 
And the rookie call. from Stanford, Garen Burris, on the recovery. Third down and one. And this crowd really into it now as Craig James picks up the first down. Mellon Clifton on the stop. Jet defense getting into it also, grabbing for the football. The thing the Patriots offensively need to do here, Marv, is make a couple of first downs, if nothing else. They've come out in the second half and punted the first three times they've had the football. New England first down from their 20, 50 seconds left. Third quarter, tied at six. Collins and James are the setbacks. Here's Collins. Not able to get off. Off the slant, Bell was there. Lance Bell has been all over the field. He really has, Marv. Uh, Hannah pulling around, blocked Clifton, and Mel avoided the block and got through the hole and made the first hit. Clock running down. 15 seconds left. Third quarter. Three-yard pickup for Collins. Second down and seven. For the Patriots. And uh, let's see, they will not get it off here in the third. So that is the end of three. The Jets and Patriots are tied at six. A couple of intriguing plays in this uh, third quarter the long bomb from o'brien to walker and his knees touch shy of the goal line the ruling no touchdown we'll be back after these words from your under the lights in foxborough start of the fourth quarter the patriots second and seven from their 23 jetson patriots tied at six frank james broke tackles Beautiful ball by James, getting across the 40-yard line. Bell and Jackson able to bring him down. This game is turning into the Lance Mel defensive show. James with an outstanding run. As you'll see, Mel playing off of his blocker, misses him, gets stiff arm in, in the face mask, and gets up and makes the play. Tries to make the fumble, a good play when you're coming up from behind. Try and force the fumble. 18-yard run by James, becoming a factor in the second half. 69 yards, 16 carries for James. First down at the 41. James again on a sweep. Across the 45, Clifton and Beato getting about a bound. As we look at the stats through three quarters, the Jets with the three turnovers being the key so far in this ball game, we were talking earlier about the Patriots offense, the two halfback situation with Collins and James. James has taken over as being the dominant runner, and Collins that time threw a great block on Gil Bowe to spring him to the outside. Second down and four. Patriots from their 47. Here's Collins. For the first down, and this... New England offensive line getting off the ball very impressively. I'm sure that Steve Grogan now, the more he's in the ball game, and he's played a, a half last week and then a three quarters this week, is getting into the flow the way he used to call the plays. He likes a strong running game, and then don't be surprised right here if he would go to a pass, a play-action pass over the middle. O.C. Tatupu has come in now, replacing Greg James, Tatupu, and Collins are the setbacks. First down at the Jet 46. Two minutes in. Fourth quarter. That's Brian in motion. Here's Tatupu. He's to the Jet 41. Clifton there to make the stop. First carry for Mosi Tatupu. Denver now leads Seattle 10-7. In the uh, third quarter, Dave Craig to Steve Largent on a nine-yard score. And Dan Marino has thrown his third touchdown of the day. So Miami over Tampa Bay, 38-21, their late third. Jets in New England, tied at six. Couple of field goals by Leahy. 
from 53 and from 52. And Franklin for the Patriots from 19 and from 44. Second down. Second and four. And the first down picked up by Craig James. Clifton and Jackson on the stop. But the Patriots now have the crowd with them. The Jets, as we mentioned earlier, beat the Dolphins last Monday night because they executed, dominated the offensive and defensive lines. Right now, the Patriot offensive line is dominating the, the Jet defensive line and doing it very well. As we look at Raymond uh, Barry, has to be uh, very pleased with the way that uh, Grogan is running this offense at this point. First down of the Jet, 35. This time, James could not make the turn. Rusty Gilbo and Barry Bennett were right there. Set for an update. Let's go to Bob Costas in NFL 85. All right, Marv. At Denver, the Seahawks are finally on the board. From the nine-yard line, they line up Steve Largent in the backfield. And he slips out, takes the pass from Dave Craig, makes a neat little move, faking left and going right. He's in for the touch. It's 10-7 Broncos now. Thank you, Bob. That's Tony Franklin. Getting ready just in case. Ten and a half remaining. Fourth quarter. Second and 11 for New England. Here's Brogan with his first throw in some time. And broken up. Bobby Jackson with an outstanding play to bat it away from Irving Fryer, who appeared to make the catch. Ball was thrown a little bit behind him as Fryer runs a little slant. Doesn't take long to throw this pass, but the ball is behind him. Ball is in the air, and Jackson knocks it free, but uh, Grogan doing the smart thing, and that is throwing, trying some quicker passes, things that don't take so long where the jet rush will get close to him. There's Bobby Jackson, eighth year out of Florida State, followed by a sprained knee this season. Had a good one here today. Saw the Grogan stats. He's only two for nine in the second half. Has a third down, 11. Big play for Fryer. And here is Tony Franklin looking to add to that New England lead with 10 22 remaining in this fourth quarter. High snap. And Franklin able to put it through. Good play by Eason. 13 plays, 92 yards, 6 minutes and 48 seconds consumed. We'll be right back. This crowd very much in it in the second half. Here in Foxborough, they have seen their Patriots take a 13-6 lead on the Jets. 36-yard touchdown pass from Brogan to Fryer. They hooked up last week against Buffalo. Aggressive coverage by the Patriots. Led by Paul Fairchild. Take a look at Mel, 56 and Gaston 99. Now, when you pressure the quarterback, you go man-to-man -man coverage in the secondary. You're not going to complete a lot of passes, as we've been telling you. But you're, when you hit one, it's going to be a big one. And look at Raymond Berry. Runs out on the field to welcome Grogan back off. And I'll tell you. He's a happy man. Jets, first down from their 22. Patriots in front, 13-6. And Hector across the 25, tripped up by Claiborne. 
Johnny Hector replacing Freeman McNeil. Freeman has been sidelined to this point, coming off of the big one against Miami. I think he's won it out. He might be getting ready, yes. Freeman bothered by back spasms, coming off the battering at the hands of the Dolphins. Second down and five. That's Tonsell in motion. Close to the first down. Hector has run for 71 yards, has not had a bad day, but not uh, Freeman McNeil type figures. Uh, Freeman has had a couple of uh, extraordinary days. I think what Freeman can do that maybe Hector can, and this is not to take anything away from Hector, is that he can set up the offensive line a little bit better. If there is a little gap there, maybe McNeil can run fake like he's going outside and then cut Play back inside to, to help the offensive lineman yes. block. He's just a little bit quicker and has that instinct. It is a Jet first down. Jets at their 32. Nine fifteen left, fourth quarter. Patrick to the 35, Sims. On the stop, so a three-yard advance. Sims and the strong safety, Roland James, able to combine. Second down and seven. Clock running, we're down to eight and a half remaining, fourth quarter. Hector is the lone deep back. That is Schuler in motion. O'Brien getting it away. Lieutenant for Schuler with Steve Nelson covering. Nelson number 57. It's good coverage in the secondary as the Jets have been going with two tight ends and two wide receivers, one setback. And thinking about why it's so tough to win here, I just think the Patriots, Mark, play much better at home than they do on the road. They always seem to play well, and Steve Nelson, the defensive captain, was all over sure uh, in coverage in that play. Now Nick Brooker in the backfield along with Johnny Hector. It's sure for the first down. Another clutch reception by the tight end, Mickey Schuler. Sandwiched by James and Marion. And the Jets with a first down. Here's a look at the secondary of the Patriots. The linebacker's dropping straight back. And you see Schuler in the middle. No linebacker was near him. It had to be a busted coverage because a, certainly a linebacker should have been in that area. Too big a gap. And to O'Brien's credit, he found the open man and went right with him. Third catch for 70 yards for Schuler. First down for the Jet, 49. Wesley Walker again on a long gator, beating Ronnie Levin. And Walker will have the ball spotted. Is it at the one again? No, they, let's see, they put it at the two now. Walker is going to go straight down the field. Now, there's pretty good coverage that the ball is throwing well enough to catch. That's the toughest catch you can make in football. Right over your helmet, you have to clear your helmet to see the football. A very tough catch, but really O'Brien threw it just about as well as you could throw it. 49 yard pass play and a remarkable catch by Wesley Walker, who has had himself a tremendous day. Five catches, 127 yards. First and goal from the two. The Jets did not score in this situation last time they were there. Let's see if the Jets are good hitting. Yes, it is a touchdown for Tony Page. So this time, Page able to get in. It was Page on the pass in the third quarter, who was jarred and fumbled, giving the ball back to the Patriots. 
So the Jets now trail by one. What we saw on this drive and the drive before this, Marv, McNeil still out of the ball game and Walker stepping forward now to pick up some of the slack along with O'Brien. Pat Leahy, 15 for 16 on the season, looking to tie it. The Jets and the Patriots are back even at 13. Tony Page, who just scored his eighth touchdown of the season. It's been a combination of Ken O'Brien and Wesley Walker. They did it for 53 yards and now for 49. And uh, this toss led to the touchdown by Tony Page. Wesley Walker with his second long completion of the day. You see he was between Lippin and Marion and a well-thrown ball puts the Jets back in the ball game. Wesley Walker in another injury plague season has come back very big here today. Stephen Starring with a beautiful return, 34 yards. Kerry Glenn on the tackle. Six and a half remaining, fourth quarter tied at 13. First down, Patriots from the 35, Greg James. Stopped by Charles Jackson. James across. The 40-yard line. Patriots have not had a 100-yard rusher thus far this season. James now, 20 carries, 86 yards. James did go for 99 in the opener against Green Bay. Miami leading Tampa Bay as Marino has thrown the three. Second down and four from the 42 New England territory. for the first down. Rusty Gilbo on the stop. I'm sure what's in Steve Grogan's mind right here is that we're going to run the ball a little bit, make some first downs, five minutes and 38 seconds on the scoreboard, and take some time off there, get out, and if we don't get a touchdown, kick a field goal with uh, a minute or less uh, left in the ball game. I'm sure that's their conservative plan at this point. Brogan has a first down. The Patriot, 47. And Brogan, able to get it away, has a man open. That's a touchdown saving tackle on Stanley Morgan. Russell Carter catching him from behind. Well, enough for being conservative. Brogan running the football. The Jets knew he was going to run it. Smart call. A little play action fake on first down after a first down. The Jets and the Idol 36 are caught up. He steps in the pocket, throws the ball down the middle, and Morgan catches the football and puts the Jets in a very difficult situation. 47-yard pass play, and we have seen a series of explosions here late in the ball game. First and goal from the six. James gets inside the five, Clifton and Jackson. Able to combine. Stanley Morgan with his third catch of the day. So Morgan, who has succeeded in the past on the long bomb against the Jets. And today, uh, here in this third and fourth quarter, it's been combinations of Wesley Walker and Stanley Morgan who have opened things up. Second and goal from the three. to Tony Collins. The longer Steve Grogan is in this game, the more you can see his play calling coming back to him. Last week he wasn't ready to play, Marv. 
he really didn't think he was going to play. He hadn't played in 18 straight games. As you see the fake, not a jet near him. But when you know you're not going to play and you don't expect to play, you don't prepare. And he did not prepare for a lot of those games. It was not prepared last week. Now it's coming back to him. They're in the action. And the Patriots now lead at 19-13. Here is Franklin. Flags thrown. The kick was put through the upright. For the Patriots, the first rushing touchdown since opening day against Green Bay. And Steve Grogan with his first touchdown on the ground since back in 1983. All kinds of movement, both sides. I think we're going to have a, a little illegal movement in the offensive line, illegal procedure. Well, this has been a, was a field goal duel for the uh, first half, and now they've gone big play. Both clubs succeeding. I think both clubs, as we look at Bud Carson, being stung by the big play twice in the uh, fourth quarter, as we said, the jet defense, very aggressive, but if you can uh, get uh, the time to throw, sometimes you can hit the big play. But both teams coming out, and I think opening up a little bit more in the fourth quarter and hitting some of those big plays. Fred Silva and his staff. Offense, illegal motion, five-yard penalty. So Franklin will try for the extra point once again. This is a big extra point. Uh, if the Jets get the ball back and could score, Tony Eason with that sore left shoulder, I'm sure, in this cool weather, that, uh, that's got to be aching a little bit. Three minutes, 27 seconds. Remaining fourth quarter, both the Jets and the Patriots have their three timeouts remaining. So they move it back five yards. Tony Franklin, who is 13 for 13, he has been perfect. In fact, uh, going back the last two years, he is 55 for his last 55. This now becomes a 24-yard uh, kick, and he puts it through. <laughs> Patriots now lead the Jets 20 back at a lively Sullivan Stadium to the screens of the Beach Boys in the background. This crowd has enjoyed what they've seen here in the second half. Patriots leading the Jets 20 to 13. The kickoff by Franklin. Kirk Springs on the return. And he's bounced out at the 24-yard uh, line, a penalty flag thrown. 15-yard return by Springs. And the Jets to the offense with 317 remaining fourth quarter. Apparently the flag was picked up, waved off. Ken O'Brien. First and 10. Walker in motion. And goes the middle to the shooter. First down across the 40. Steve Nelson on the stop of Schuler, a 19-yard pass play. Barb, if I were the Patriots, I would lock on to Schuler and to Walker. As we look at a look score, at that. Steve DeBerg and Jimmy Giles have hooked up for two touchdowns in the fourth quarter to bring Tampa Bay back. We've got a hot one there, and we've got a hot one here, but I would get on to Schuler and Walker if I were the Patriots. First down, Jets at their 43. Here's Hector. Down the hole and a good second effort out to midfield. Marion and Sims combining on the stop. Fourth quarter, Denver holding on against Seattle. They lead a 10 7. The Jets will go up against Seattle at Giant Stadium next Sunday. Jets have never beaten Seattle, have they? 
think I, uh, uh, even in the years where the uh, Seahawks were struggling and uh, the Jets were on top of the AFC East. Third down three. Page and Hector in the backfield. And O'Brien in trouble. That will be called a sack. They try to grab the ball out of his hand. Dennis Owens, the nose tackle. Andre Tippett, the outside linebacker, able to combine. A timeout is called. We'll be back in a... It'll be a third down and seven. Billy Sullivan, the uh, owner of the New England Patriots, and uh, quite a man. He's uh, very excited, I'm sure, about the offense that the uh, Patriots have exhibited. But you know... Bar the Jets are in an area where they may go for it on fourth down. They're on about their own 45-yard line. It's third and third and seven. Two minutes left, and they have all their timeouts. So I'm sure in this discussion on the sideline, there was some mention about whether or not we're going to go for it on fourth down. That last Patriot sack credited to Andre Tippett. So his second of the day. He's come back strong here against the Jets. He had three sacks in the opener against the Packers had not had a sack uh, since then. Well, they tried to block Tippett with a uh, guard. Alexander tried to come out, and he did block him, but what happened is Tippett really collapsed the pocket, and there wasn't a lot of room for O'Brien. If this game concludes on time, we will switch to the conclusion of Seattle and Denver. Patriots feel they have it. They strip for Bryan. And the Patriots have recovered. Look to be Steve Nelson. There's Nelson, number 57. As they unravel, let's see. I think they're giving it to the Jets. Apparently, them. yes, it was whistled. It's called a sack. And... Uh, the play was stopped on the whistle. Patriots off the field to celebrate as they come on back. That's Tippett, 56, beating his man and causing the fumble. Tippett has recovered three fumbles this year already, has two sacks, and caused another fumble here. They're going for it on four. So it comes down to this for the Jets, a minute and a half left. Fourth quarter, fourth down and ten. Got it. And it is a first down. Walker then takes a pop. He was looking around expecting some company. Well, he didn't know. That he hasn't been in there in a while. He forgot he could get up and run, but the defender didn't uh, want to make sure he was down. Took a shot from Ronnie Lippett. Now, he runs Claiborne off deep. Now, he is wide open. The thing that makes this play is the pass protection. O'Brien didn't have it the last time. This time, the offensive line came up and made the made the time, but tough hit. We'll be right back. Let's go back to that key fourth down conversion. O'Brien with lots of time stays in the pocket and makes sure of the first down. Walker on the completion. Townsell to the right, so left. Minute 11, remaining fourth quarter. And O'Brien throws the middle. Through the hands of Sohn. Threw it behind him. Down to a minute five. Jets have two timeouts left. Patriots have all three. Top of your screen, you might have, no, you won't, probably won't see it. Here he comes right in the middle. Now you see he has to throw it a little bit left to get it away from Nelson. That's why the ball was thrown behind him. The only other opportunity was to throw it over him, which would have allowed more defensive backs time to get close. Second and ten. He has the time and overthrows Saul. Claiborne on the coverage. I'd like to thank our producer, Glenn Adamo, and our director, Andy Rosenberg. As you look at the uh, stats on Ken O'Brien, Steve Grogan's statistics not pretty, but did the job, uh, particularly down the stretch, the long bombs to Stanley Morgan, and then Grogan able to cap it off with the uh, three-yard bootleg. For the go-ahead, down to a minute one. Fourth quarter, Patriots lead 20-13. Third down play. A blind stepping up in half. 
Here was Wallet, and let's see what they call it. Is it incomplete? Andre Tippett has been all over. Three sacks. Patriots have four in all. They can't block Tippett. 56. That time the Patriots changed up, went to a man-to-man -man coverage. Everybody is covered, and Tippett finally gets rid of his man, gets in there in time. The arm was coming forward. Incomplete pass. Tippett come, will come from the right side of your screen. Hector tries to help and does. Powell, he beats Powell. Hector doesn't keep him there. Stay with him long enough. Tippett keeps coming. Again for the Jets, it's come down to a fourth down play. And O'Brien has nowhere to go. This time it's Darren Burris. The rookie from Stanford has come up with another big play. Fifth sack of the day for the Patriots. And you have to feel that Joe Walt will not be pleased with the work of the offensive line again here today. Well, he said they've been up and down, but the thing you have to give credit to is the Patriot defense. We said coming in that they were number two defending the pass in third and fourth downs, and they certainly showed why. Good pressure and tight coverage. Ken O'Brien. series 47 seconds remaining fourth quarter Patriots will just run it out these are the formations you like to have as a quarterback you like to get in this formation and take a knee aggressive defensive play by the Patriots Steve Grogan in his first start since early last season and the Patriots, although Grogan did not have the impressive statistics, were able to turn it on with the long bombs to Stanley Morgan down the stretch and able to recapture the lead and right here have a 20 to 13 edge with 44 seconds remaining and a timeout has been called. Well, you can see Grogan getting more confident as the game went on of his running plays and of his, uh, of his play action and of his pass drops. The, the, the ideal play, the, uh, the one that really showed that was when they were on their own, the uh, Jets three or four yard line and he faked the running play and took the ball in around left end uh, for a touchdown. But uh, O'Brien has uh, grown in this ball game too. He has not had his uh, his main running back with Neal, and he has done a pretty good job without him. And uh, it's a tough loss for the Jets. Broken 11 for 31, 172 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Next week, New England will be at Tampa Bay, and uh, they're providing all kinds of problems for the uh, Dolphins in the fourth quarter. Patriots will be back home in two weeks to face Miami. That game already a sellout. It has been for weeks. While the Jets home for Seattle next week and uh, then travel to Indianapolis and Miami. Jets in a stretch playing three out of four on the road. And again, the Jets uh, will make it 0-4 following Monday night games against the Dolphins and the streak will continue as we look at Freeman McNeil. He was the story Monday night, battered and bruised, uh, short week. Uh, Joe Walton decided to keep him out, and uh, he he will obviously be back uh, there next Sunday against Seattle, but there, there again, uh, we talked about the jinx, the Jets coming in here, having played very uh, poorly here in the past. We'll have to play Seattle at home, and knowing that they've never beaten Seattle, so uh, a couple of tough teams uh, the uh, these two weeks. Jets just used their final timeout. 40 seconds remaining. Third down play. Seattle and Denver following the Jets and the Patriots. And now the clock running down. So the Patriots will go over 500 for the record of four and three. And the Jets who had won five in a row, will now see the record drop to five and two. Clock running down. We are down to 10 seconds remaining. Denver leading Seattle in the fourth. 
And uh, we will be going to the uh, Seahawks and the Broncos in just a moment. Crowd counting it out. And that, let's see, well, the clock stopped with uh, three seconds left. Delay of game is called, so they will have to uh, take a final snap. It's a big win for Raymond Berry, too. You know, he'd been taking some heat in the newspapers and from the fans up here for his conservative style of offense. And like we said, he says, I'm not that conservative. And I think with the new offense that he put in this year, the new offensive coaches, I think he felt like we're just going to ease into this in the two-back situation. And I think uh, uh, this was a big win for him. There was an article in the paper this morning how Raymond Berry, uh, the teams that he has beaten, have not had a winning record, and certainly the Jets uh, will uh, stop uh, that conversation from going on any further. And notice the back pedal because the Patriots wanted to make sure that they took three seconds or else uh, the Jets would have had a shot at uh, getting the ball for a final desperation play. But uh, that is it. The Patriots have...